wrapping up the third and final day of Qualcomm's second annual Tech Summit here in Hawaii. And while there's not been a ton of news from this event, what we did hear though sets the stage for devices to expect in 2018. The first thing we saw were laptops from HP and Asus, which are the first always connected PCs running Windows 10 on Snapdragon 835. These devices stand out not just for the promise of allowing you to buy LTE data in chunks, but also for the promised battery life. We're being told these can last for up to 22 hours of active use and for up to 30 days on standby. They'll also turn on instantly like smartphones do, so you don't have to wait a few seconds before you can log on to your PC. Specifically, the two devices were the Asus Nova Go, which by the way, don't get me started on why that name is a bad choice. The Nova Go will start at $599 when it's available in the first quarter of 2018, uh, and it's a 13-inch laptop. The HP NVX2 will be available early next year as well. However, for that, we don't know the price yet. We'll likely find out at CES. Qualcomm also announced an interesting partnership here at the show. It's teaming up with AMD to create more powerful devices for the always connected PC ecosystem. These will combine AMD's Ryzen mobile processors with Qualcomm's Snapdragon X16 Gigabit LTE modems and give some competition to Intel in this space. Neither company has really shared a lot of details on how they're going to collaborate just yet, except to say that they are going to partner together, so we don't really know what to expect just yet. But it does introduce some new options in the always connected PC space, which generally is good news for consumers. Day 2 was all about Qualcomm's latest premium mobile processor, the Snapdragon 845. Not only will it offer 30% better performance and 30% better power consumption, but it will also enable new features in photography, security, connectivity, and AI processing. Let's go over the highlights here. Snapdragon 845 will enable 4K HDR video capture with smartphone cameras and better low-light pictures thanks to new techniques used by the image signal processor. Qualcomm also added a so-called secure processing unit to the chipset that acts as a silo for biometric authentication data. And instead of using a dedicated neural processing unit like other chipsets, the Snapdragon 845 actually assesses the type of computation needed by certain tasks and assigns it to the component best suited for it. Oh, and the new X20 modem allows devices to reach LTE speeds of up to 1.2 gigabits per second where a gigabit is available by allowing for 5 carry aggregation and access to unlicensed spectrum. Whew, that's a lot of gobbledygook. And if you want more details on exactly how all of that works, check out the articles we've already published over the last two days explaining all of that. We also saw a few brief demos of what the Snapdragon 845 can do here at the show, but there was nothing truly illuminating other than proof of graphics prowess and connection speeds in a simulated environment. Qualcomm also announced a bunch of partnerships through all three days of the summit, including with Samsung, who's manufacturing the new chipsets, as well as Chinese search giant Baidu. Xiaomi was also here to tell us that the Mi 7 will use the Snapdragon 845 chipset, but we won't really see that for a while. We can only keep our fingers crossed for smartphones or other devices with Snapdragon 845 in them at CES. In the meantime, it's been at least a preview of what to expect from next year's devices. Now I've got to go say goodbye to Hawaii and start gearing up for CES in a matter of weeks. See you all then.